Tetratech's baseline assessment tool, commonly referred to as the BAT tool, is a web-based program to help communities become more resilient to disasters. Tetratech has launched the BAT tool program's mitigation module, an extension that helps communities, counties, states, and tribal nations manage their mitigation actions and track mitigation project success. The BAT tool program provides secure, round-the-clock access to each jurisdiction's mitigation strategy and streamlines the capture of critical elements needed to report on their progress. From project identification through implementation, the BAT tool program directly supports Community Rating System Activity 510 annual reporting and Federal Emergency Management Agency Hazard Mitigation Plan annual maintenance and five-year updates. The BAT tool program also can be used to assist with local plan roll-up, for multi-jurisdictional and state HMPs, project grant funding opportunity identification, mitigation investment tracking, project implementation management, development of mitigation loss avoidance studies, and enhanced communication between federal, state, and local levels. Today, we will walk you through using this program as a municipal user, such as a community that participated in a multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan or community participating in CRS, the community rating system, and answer some of the questions you are likely to have. Each jurisdiction receives a unique username and password. To log in, simply enter your username and password and click the login button. Upon your first login, you will be asked to review the terms and accept before proceeding. The landing page of the BAT tool is your dashboard. On the left, the dashboard provides a quick summary of the reporting progress in a reporting period. For example, your mitigation or resilience plan maintenance procedures may require you to review action progress annually. The left graphic summarizes the review progress of your jurisdiction's actions, also known as projects. It will show you at a glance the number of actions where review has been started, the number of actions where your review is in progress, and the number of actions where your review has been completed. On the right, the dashboard graphic summarizes the cumulative progress of action implementation over the period of performance for your plan. This graphic summarizes the number of actions where implementation has not started or have no progress, are in progress, have been completed, or have been discontinued. Actions can be discontinued because they are no longer something a jurisdiction wants to pursue or because the initial problem the action was designed to address has been solved. Another action status is the ongoing capability. Ongoing capabilities are actions that have been adopted into a jurisdiction's normal operations and could be revisited regularly or once a year. Good examples of ongoing capabilities are annual outreach projects, having certified staff, and regular maintenance activities. Now that we have logged in and checked out your jurisdiction's dashboard, let's discuss navigation so we know our way around. On the left-hand side of your screen, you will see the navigation bar. The navigation bar gives the following options, and I will explain the functionality of each. The dashboard tab will return you to the dashboard, the page we currently see at any time. Plan actions will jump directly into the list of your actions. We will discuss actions and the review process of actions in just a moment. The search function allows you to search using a variety of methods, including plan, jurisdiction, action category, review status, and more. The reports tab allows you to generate a progress report for your plan. To generate a report, first select the plan, then select the jurisdiction, and click search. To generate a historic report, you can choose to select the start and end dates. The Resources tab answers some of the common questions you may have about using the BAT tool. This page is customizable to suit plans' needs. The About tab provides information about hazard mitigation and Tetra Tech services. And finally, the Contact Us tab provides email contact for any questions you have that have not been resolved in the Resources tab. On any tab, you will also have access to the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner which provides options to edit your profile, get help, or log out. You can also click on the blue POC button and a pop-up window will open where you can edit your primary and secondary points of contact for your jurisdiction. These are the individuals the BAT tool will send reminder emails to regarding your project review. 
Now that we know our way around, let's dive into reviewing our actions or mitigation projects. There are two places to review your actions. On your dashboard, below the graphics in the table, or using the Plan Actions tab on the left navigation bar. Both locations will only show you the actions or mitigation projects you have access to. Clicking on either location will bring you to the same review screen. Let's look at the Plan Actions tab further. When you click on it, a new screen appears listing each action and quick information to describe the action. Each action is described on this tab by the plan it is a part of, the action ID number, a brief description of the action, the action status, review status, the leading agency, and when the action was last updated or reviewed. If your jurisdiction has a lot of actions identified, you may need to click on the next page to find the particular action you are searching for, or you can use the search tab we discussed earlier. Once we have found our action, it is time to review. Click on the review icon located next to your action like so to begin the review process. To review an action, step one is to enter our name so the BAT tool can record who has completed the review. This allows us to track who has contributed to the review of the action or project and questions can be followed up. Once the reviewer has entered their name, they are ready to review the action by selecting from the drop down menu noted as step two. The reviewer will select if the action has had no implementation progress, is in progress, has been completed, perhaps through capital funding or a grant award, has been discontinued, or is an ongoing capability. It is strongly recommended that the reviewer provide additional comments in the Project Action Status Comments field. Details to consider could be the phases that have been completed, the funding source and amount, expected timeline of additional phases, or reasons why work has not begun. Being detailed in this field will set you up for success for your next plan update. It is also recommended that you also review the description of the action as shown here and make any necessary edits to keep the information kept on file for the action current and up to date. The information provided was initially developed during the development of the plan the action came from. However, these details may need to change over time to reflect updates to the action and how it will be carried out. If you do not have a description of the specific problem mitigated, take a moment to describe the problem you are trying to solve or the risk you are trying to reduce. These details will set you up for success, not only for your next hazard mitigation plan update, but the next grant application season as well. Review all of the other entries pre-populated on this page. This initial data was provided through your plan. If anything has changed, please update. If you selected an action status of completed or in progress, that will activate additional questions at the bottom of the page to help track funding source, avoided loss, action benefits, and measure overall mitigation and resilience success. This area in blue are the additional fields that are activated. When you select a funding source, there is a drop-down menu item to select from a variety of federal funding entities. If your funding source is not listed, select Other and enter the funding source in the text box. As your projects are implemented, it is important for a jurisdiction to track loss avoidance, or success of the project. So the BAT tool will ask if a benefit cost analysis, or BCA, ratio was calculated, what the ratio was, and the dollar equivalent of the losses. For example, for the BCA, you may have determined for your flood mitigation project that $250,000 in structural damages occurred historically, and this project will eliminate this future loss based on the project design. You can use the historical damages as your avoided future loss in this field. It is equally important to note the project's level of protection or design level, such as protecting to a 25-year storm rain event, or elevate to the base flood elevation plus three feet of freeboard. Tracking avoided loss enables each jurisdiction to measure success as future events occur, so the BAT tool will request the user to describe the losses avoided by implementing the project so that each jurisdiction has metrics to track. These additional fields enable you to track grant funding awards, strengthen future applications, calculate avoided loss from future events, 
and continue to measure your overall mitigation and resilience success. The BAT tool also has an opportunity to map the location of your actions. If the action takes place in a specific location or site rather than your entire planning area, you can use the built-in Survey123 tool to open a new window and place the project location on a map. Simply provide your name, your agency department or municipality, the BAT tool action ID number, your jurisdiction, and the action status. Next, enter an address or navigate to the location on the map and left click to drop a pin. Once you click submit, the location of your project will be permanently saved as added details for your action. Once you are satisfied with your review, you can choose to save your review as a draft, meaning you will come back later and finish your work, or you can choose to save and submit, meaning your review of this action is complete. These buttons are available at the bottom of this page. If during your review, you made a mistake but hit save and submit already, not to worry. You can still return and edit your review and click save and submit. Once you have saved and submitted, use the next action button to move forward and review the next action. If you are not ready to review that particular action, you can still use the next action button to jump ahead and skip the review of the current action for another time. Continue to review your actions and update their status and details as you move forward. Remember to save and submit to ensure your changes are logged into the system. Although most plans involve a rigorous process to identify and develop actions, jurisdictions may occasionally find that they would like to add an additional action as needs arise. When you are ready to add an additional action, click on the Add New Action button. The new action button can be found in two places, on your dashboard or in the action review screen in the top right of the screen. By clicking on add new action, this will bring you to a blank version of the action review page. Follow the same process and enter your name as the reviewer. Remember to select an action ID number that is not already being used. To ensure we track this action properly, start your action ID with the year you are entering this new action. For example, I will name this new action 2022 and then use the same naming and numbering protocol. Once you are confident that you have entered everything correctly, you can either save as a draft or save and submit. Once you save and submit, the action will be saved as part of the suite of actions for your jurisdiction and be available for future reviews. The BAT tool includes a search page so that a user may query their actions and export the information at any time. You can query by keyword or any attribute included in the action page. BAT tool users often use the BAT tool query functionality to find actions that align with funding priorities or search for successfully funded projects to showcase as mitigation success stories. This page allows a user to export the plan's data at any time to support other mitigation efforts in your daily operations. Now that we have reviewed our actions, it is time to generate a report. Click on the Reports tab. To generate a report, first select the plan, then select the jurisdiction, then click Search. The Generate Report button will generate a Word document that can be downloaded and further customized for your community. It will already summarize the status of the actions you reviewed within the dates specified in the fields on the screen. If you did not specify any dates, the report will document the latest action progress status in the system. This report can be leveraged to submit to your state for your annual HMP progress report or your CRS progress report. On the left navigation bar, we also have resources and about pages that provide additional support and frequently asked questions on how to use this program. Now that you are aware of all the features the BAT tool has to offer, we hope you will find it convenient and easy to use. However, 
If you do have questions, remember that you can refer to the resources tab, review this video again, or contact Tetra Tech directly using the contact us tab. Thank you for your interest and for trusting Tetra Tech with your planning needs.